thanks very much for being here. I'm, I'm kind of the warm-up act, uh, because the, as you saw, there's a lot of detail there, and most of the stuff I have in my demo, I've had to relinquish to the people who actually know it and build it and are, and are going to show it. But what I want to do is just do a, a live demo. And yeah, I'm a little nervous doing a live demo. They always go wrong, don't they? Um, but before I do that, I'm just going to spend two or three minutes just explaining our mindset and, and what we have in mind and why, why we're doing this a little bit. And then I'm going to get in and I'm going to write a little bit of Hello World code. I'm going to do a little bit of CICD to show you deploying it. I'm going to talk to Twitter, so I'm going to do a bit of connectivity and just show you a, a, just a high-level overview of a few bits of the language and then hopefully give you some pointers to some of the other interesting sessions that are going to come up that are going to dive into more detail. So we see this, this inexorable shift in the industry, which is that uh, everyone is disaggregating into smaller components. So uh, companies like Uber, Amazon, Google, eBay, and, and you know, a lot smaller companies as well are basically creating more and more cloud, smaller components, moving towards serverless and microservices architectures. And, and that's not just for those big guys. It's, it's almost everyone I talk to is either doing it or thinking about doing it, talking about doing it. And the reason why is this is a sort of a, it's a inevitable shift that's happening. And you can see that over you know, five decades of, of more and more decoupling. And this is really about creating agility. That's why it's happening. And those, that disaggregation, those disaggregated components are all becoming network accessible. That's fun, the fundamental shift in the way we program. Everything's becoming a network endpoint, whether it's functions, APIs, SaaS, microservices, and so forth. And, and the number of endpoints is exploding. So as a result, the applications that we're building are increasingly no longer living within a single machine, but they are talking to different endpoints all the time. And everybody is building apps that are now talking to different endpoints. And that, that skill, that, that art of, of building systems that communicate between different network endpoints is called integration. And there are all these techniques like transaction circuit breaking, protocol handling, security, stream processing. There are all these things that are hard to do in that world. And typically in the past, we had two ways of dealing with it. One was we built specific products to do that. Enterprise service bus, EAI hubs, business process management tools. And these tools understood integration. They were integration simple. They built in all that hard stuff. But they have one big flaw. They're just not agile. So who's a developer in the audience? Hands up. So do you like writing in XML? No hands up. Do you like writing in YAML? No hands up. So, so these tools that have DSLs, YAML, XML, or even graphical configs just don't attract developers because they interrupt developer flow. We like to edit, build, deploy, test, and cycle around that flow quickly. And these tools don't help you do that. So what if we go to the other side? We just say, forget about those. those. We just write in Java, Go, Rust whatever. When you have that, the developer has to solve those hard problems. They have to take responsibility for the integration logic. And there's two ways they do it. Either they code it from scratch, and then it, you know, you're reinventing the wheel, or you pull in some kind of framework, some kind of bolt-on framework, like Spring Integration, Camel, all these things. And these, these extra tools don't fit and mesh neatly with the language. And if you've ever looked at uh, Spring Integration or Camel and those sort of things, it just, it's just hard work. It's not, it's not natural. It's not native. So those systems are not integration simple. And, and that creates what we call the integration gap. And we, you know, I can, I can sort of 
go into the details, but I don't really need to. We think this is a, is a real problem that needs solving. And Ballerina is an attempt to solve that problem. I'm not saying it's going to be the only attempt. I'm not saying it's going to be the, the perfect answer to this problem. But we think there's a real problem, and we're trying to solve it. And we're trying to solve it by creating a language that's a compiled, type-safe, concurrent language that has integration primitives built into the language, that has a network-centric type system that understands XML, JSON, protobuf as native types within the system, that understands the, the error handling that you need in network and distributed systems, that has things like circuit breakers and transactions built in. And, and what's really cool, and, and I'm sure Sanjeeva will talk more about this, because he's, he's the genius who had this idea. What happened was every time we built an integration for a customer, we'd always draw, draw a sequence diagram. The, the, I, I'm not a big UML fan. They're the bit of UML I love. It's just sequence diagrams. And we built this language around sequence diagrams, and I'll show you that. I think it's really interesting. We, we built it around a very powerful type system that represents network types very efficiently. The, the worker concurrency is a key part of building any distributed system. And unlike Go, let's, let's just have a little dig here. We built package management in from day one. So hopefully we're going to avoid five years of arguments about what the right package management system is for your language. So I think that's really important as well, because we see the problem with integration is you need to share. You know, we need to build a big set of connectors to every single endpoint, and we can't do that. No one person can do that. So having a package management system is key to this. So let's just stop talking and show you some code. I've got point nine eight installed, and I've got a brand new empty directory here. You can see, and I'm going to just um, I'm going to put my glasses on to start with, because otherwise I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> and I'm going to sit down. I demanded a chair and a desk, and I'm just going to start writing some code. So I'm going to create a bal file. That's the standard extension for Ballerina, and I'm using VS Code, and we have an awesome development team that has been working on the tooling, and they've built a plugin for VS Code. And you can see it's going to do me some, a bit of uh, command you know, tab completion. And I, so Hello World is, is a network service for us. So I'm going to start by importing the HTTP library. And I'm going to create a service. A service is a first class concept in Ballerina. And that's basically something that's listening on a network port and exposing stuff. So I'm going to call it the hello service. And I'm going to create a resource called hi. And there's actually some simpler syntax, but I just want to show you this a little bit, because it's going to So I'm going to create an HTTP response object. And I'm going to just new that up. And then I'm going to set the payload on there. And I'm going to say, hello world. I'm going to put a slash n in, so when I curl it, it's not too ugly. And now I'm going to just respond to the caller. So you notice here that there's an endpoint. That endpoint is another built-in concept. So effectively, what we're doing in network programming is, is talking between endpoints. So I'm going to respond to that endpoint with that response. And I want to just make an interesting point here. So you see that dot there res.setPayload. So that's a local action on a local object. right? But when I talk to an endpoint, I have a completely different syntax, which is this arrow. So one of the big problems in distributed computing is that the assumption that, that local and distributed are the same. In our syntax, we, did, we call out every time you're talking across workers, across networks, we're calling that out by using a different syntax. And that's a, a reminder to you as the developer that we're doing something different here. So I just need to do one more thing, which is I need to, to create a listener endpoint. And I'm going to put it on port 9090. And I'm going to bind this service to that listener. And I said this is a, a, um, a compiled type safe language. So I'm going to build that demo.bal. And it's created a, a balx file. And I'm going to run that. Okay. 
and I'm going to just do a curl HTTP localhost 1990 slash hello slash hi. So it's given it a default URL path based on the names of the service and the resource. And there we go, hello world. So there we go. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's really not that exciting, but it, let me just show you. I, could have, I wanted to make that point about local remote. We could have actually just done it in about 10 lines of code like this. Hello world, slash n. Now, there are some, uh, there are some, uh, these attributes are a way of us basically saying to the, to the runtime, you know, I want to change the behavior of this. So I'm going to just annotate it with a base path saying I want it on the slash, and I'm going to annotate this resource to say I want the path to be slash. And now I can just, now you don't have to build and run. You can just run, and it will build and run in one go. So I'm going to do that, and now it should be just on the base path there. So that's really simple. Now I want to just show one more thing quickly. I'm going to, oh, I must have done that wrong. I'm going to do, I'm going to add a Docker config, and I'm going to give it an image name, slash hello ballerina. And I need to import the Docker uh, package here, which is in a ballerina x. And now when I build this, it's actually going to build me a Docker file, build an image, and uh, I can now run this through Docker. So this is one of the reasons why we call this a cloud-native programming language. I can basically, actually, I'm going to type out my own version just, just to be uh, difficult. My STI. I, want to, I need to bind the port 1990. And Frio slash hello ballerina, come on, latest. And now it's running as a Dockerized container, and it's still working. So we can kill that. So we've, we've shown you know, in, what, about five minutes, a network service listening on port 1990, responding, and running in Docker. So I think that's, that's demonstrating this effectiveness. And also, I've already done three iterations. I've already gone through three edit, build, test iterations, which I, I think is lovely. I want to show you a couple more things quickly. So I'm just going to make a new directory. And let's call this bi, cd bi. There is a thing called ballerina in it. And this will create a package. So we have a package structure and a project structure. And, and we have this ballerina toml, which basically sets up the, the definition for the project. And I'm going to put it in an organization name. And I'm going to call it 0.03. And I'm going to create a service in the package, uh, sorry, package hello, and finish. So if I do a tree minus a, and I just expand that a little bit, what you'll see is that's created me a project structure with a directory. We're using Markdown to, to, just, to document the package. It's given me a hello service, and it's given me a test. Now, this is the bug that, <laughs> um, that Tyler was just mentioning, which is if I build that, unfortunately, the test is going to fail. So I'm just going to show you that. Um, basically, we did some clever stuff in the tests, but we haven't fixed the code generation that code that in Ballerina in it. So that's going to be fixed very shortly. If I do build it and I do skip test, I think that's the right one. No. Let me just remind myself what the syntax is to skip the test. Is skip tests nearly right? Then we can build that. And I can actually push that package up to central. And you guys can find that. So that's now in, the, in Ballerina Central. If I just go to, to a browser um, and I go to uh, central.ballerina.io, sign in. So you basically can sign in with Google or GitHub. And oh, 
Why is it doing that to me? Oh, come on. <laughs> I told you live demos are going to go wrong. Let me try that one more time, and if it doesn't work, we're going to skip that bit of it. Yes, there we go. So manage packages, and you can see I've just pushed that 0 .003 up to Ballerina Central. So the reason I want to show you the Ballerina in it and the Hello World and the Docker is I've actually uh, created a package in GitHub. You can go and look at it. It's, it's pz3o slash btest. And I have got a, I have got a little ballerina program, pretty much the same as you've just seen. It has that base path annotation. It has the Docker annotation. And it says, hello, world. And that's actually running in Kubernetes on Google Cloud Engine at b7a.frio.me. And it's saying, hello, world. So what I'm going to just do is go and change that to say, hello, ballerina con. And I'm going to do a git add, git commit, git push. Oh, I'm in the wrong directory. No, another live demo thing. What did I do wrong there? Have I saved that? Let me try that. OK. And I have got this running in CodeFresh. So CodeFresh is a, like Travis, it's a CI CD build system. And they have got awesome Kubernetes integration. So if I just go and look at the build, that git push has kicked off this build. I can go look at the, it's just, it's just starting up to build the ballerina service, run the tests, um, build the Docker image, push the Docker image to, to Docker Hub, and then uh, do a kube control update on my Kubernetes install. I'm just going to show you the YAML file, which they use, the CodeFresh YAML. Basically, it's pretty straightforward. It's just got those steps, build, test, build the image, push the image, and deploy to Kubernetes. And I have got a Kubernetes cluster. Um, if I go to uh, Google Cloud Platform, and I go to my uh, Kubernetes project and Kubernetes engine cluster, I've got this cluster defined, and I've used OAuth to sync up the code fresh with the cluster. And if I go back to that console and close that window, let's see if it's finished the build. It says it successfully ran. Let's try it out. So B7A, free o me. Hello, BallerinaCon. There we go. So that is a beautiful example of how easily this language integrates into a CI CD flow straight into Kubernetes. Now, we actually have some much more powerful Kubernetes support. And Lakmal, who wrote it, is here today. And he's going to be telling you all about the annotations and the Kubernetes support. I just want to do a quick demo. So let's recap. I've done some CI CD. I've done some tests. I've done uh, some simple code. I've got it running in Docker. I've got it running in Kubernetes on the web. What I haven't done is any integration, right? <laughs> And I said this was all about integration. So let's show some integration. So let me go back to, my, um, to that project I was working on. Uh, slash demo slash beacon. And I'm going to close this down, close that down. And I probably should have done this before. I'm just going to clear out my cache. Uh, Oh, no, it's already clear. Good. So I want to talk to Twitter. So I said we have some package management. I'm going to just make a bit of room here. So I'm going to search the package system for Twitter connectors. Uh, you could also do that through that central Ballerina I.O. It turns out there's two. 
There's one that WSO2 has written, and there's one that this guy, Catherine, or, or girl, Catherine, has written. I haven't tried the Catherine one, so I'm not going to do that, but I am going to go and pull uh, the WSO2 slash Twitter one. Now, it's really easy to call HTTP endpoints, so this is just wrapping up that Twitter HTTP API in a type-safe package. So if you go look at the code of that Twitter connector, it's in GitHub. It's really pretty straightforward, but it does make the experience of working with Twitter really straightforward. So I'm going to now import that WSO2 Twitter. And this is going to be a new endpoint. So this time, it's going to be a, a Twitter client endpoint, and I'm going to call it my tweeter. And I need to give it some config, because it needs all my secrets. So to do that, uh, you can see I need to pass an access token, access token secret, a client ID, a client secret. So, uh, so as not to show you all those, which would be nice, but um, some of you, since this is being live streamed, someone can, might steal my things. I have got a little bit of config that is going to read that from a, from a file for me. So, so we have support for reading from TOML and YAML files. And I just need to import the config library that's going to pull that in. So that's going to go to a config file and pull those out. And now, instead of just responding back to the user, what I want to do is I want to pass some information and tweet that. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that this is going to be an HTTP post that comes in. So I'm going to say I need a post. And I'm going to say to the, to, to the runtime that there's going to be some body being passed in that post that I want to read. And I don't really have time to demonstrate it, but that could be a JSON directly, could be an XML, or you can define your own record type, and we will map from JSON into your record type automatically. So there's all kinds of power in how you pro handle the protocol and the incoming messages that's really cool. I'm just going to say it's a string. And I want to do a little bit of logic on that string. So it's a, a full programming language. So I want to say if the body doesn't contain the tag at ballerina lang, then I want to add that in. And now I want to uh, do my tweet. So I'm going to just show you uh, something fairly straightforward. So basically, I've got that tweeter. And just let me show you that again. This is the nice thing about a connector. It's typed. And so the language server has picked up that package. The language server is the IDE plugin. And it's showing me all the things I can do with the Twitter API. And it's saying, you just need to pass me a string, and I'll tweet it. So I'm going to tweet that. Now, uh, sorry. So it's that body that I want to tweet. Now, what this is actually, so, so it's a type safe language, but we have type inference. So this var is going to say, work out what the type is from the calling. Now, I happen to know, because I've used this library before, that there's a Twitter status object. Now, unfortunately, that's told me that there's an incompatible type. What it's saying is that you're either going to get back a Twitter status or an error. And this is the union type system. And, and um, Samira is going to tell you more about this. So really, what I should be saying is I'm either getting a Twitter status or an error. Now, I could handle that error. But there's a, there's a sort of a cheeky way of doing that, which is basically to say check. Check is saying automatically handle the error by passing it back to the runtime. Then I'm going to get a runtime error. So that's a nice bit of syntactic sugar that makes my, it much clearer. I just want to automatically handle the error. And now I'm going to show you how we can create a JSON. So you can just inline JSON here. You can just go key value 
like this, and it will it it just does it for you. Um, now, what's really nice about this status is that it also knows all the things that come back from that status. So you get the ID, the language, the retweet count, all these kind of things back from there. So I'm going to just pass that ID. In fact, I'm just going to pass the create uh, created date back. So it's going to be status dot created at. And now we're going to respond back to that caller with that JSON. So there's a really nice little bit of code. We're doing a bit of transformation on the incoming data. We're doing, creating a JSON in a very straightforward native way on the outbound. And it's really capturing the intent of this in a very sweet, clear, and beautiful way, I think. So let's just build that. Check that I haven't made any mistakes, which I usually have. Um, oh, I still got those Docker things in there. And that's OK. I'm going to ignore the Docker for the moment. And I'm going to run it. And I need to pass the Twitter config to it. Come on. And demo.balix. So that's running. And I'm going to do another curl. So this time, I'm going to pass a string. And I'm going to say hello from uh, ballerina con hashtag ballerina uh, and HTTP local host 1990. Fingers crossed. Well, it said there's a created date. Let me go and look at my uh, Twitter feed. And there it is. So we've managed to tweet something uh, really very simply. So I said that this sequence diagrammatic, um, this diagram is being created. Let me just enlarge that a little bit. Dynamically from the code. This is not a pre-built diagram. Let me just, uh, come on. There we go. So that is showing really clearly what's happening. I've got the caller sending a request with a body in. There's a bit of true-false logic that's happening. Then I'm calling out to Twitter with a body. And then I'm responding with a JSON back to the, the client. So this is, you know, this is awesome. There is a, a tool that comes with Valerina called Composer which is a web-based, it's based on Electron, and it's a, um, let me just enlarge that. It's, a, it's another packaging of that IDE. If you like to, you can actually go and edit that sequence diagram in Composer. Personally, that's not my thing. I'm more of a command line text guy. But I know that there are people who love that ability, and there's some really useful tools like it will import a JSON and, and guess what the record structure is for it. So there's some really cool stuff there as well. So let me go back to, hold on, I've lost my presentation. So we did showed you some annotations. I showed you Docker. I showed you the ballerina in it with that slight bug. I showed you some CI CD. Um, not just code fresh, so uh, all of our Examples and guides have Travis builds, and we use Travis to build them. And uh, I've done some stuff myself with Travis, really nice, very simple to integrate into Travis. So if you go to the Ballerina Guides RESTful service, you'll see a default Travis YAML you can take to do continuous build in Travis. I showed you building and deploying something in a real system with CodeFresh deployment. I've showed you connectors how we connected to Twitter, and how we did a very simple transformation. So this is where the full language is really important. When you have a DSL or an ESB language, there's always times you have to go and do some real code. And you end up jumping out to JavaScript or Java or some other language. And, and then you have this discontinuity. 
So the fact that this is a full programming language that understands these network concepts means that you stay in the zone as a developer and you get that validation of all the symbols, all the types across the, 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 the integration stuff and the, and the logic stuff. So I think that's really important. I showed you how we build the sequence diagram and how the whole language is based around sequence diagrams. You're going to see that even more when Samira shows you the worker syntax and the concurrency model. Everything that I demoed is in a, is in a repo online. So if you want to repeat the demo, uh, there's a lot more to it. There's the Kubernetes. Uh, there's some async stuff in that demo. I've cut it down, as I said, because of all the cool talks that are happening later. It's, I, what I have on my machine is Ballerina 980. Uh, I have Docker Edge, which includes Kubernetes, which lets me do the Kubernetes demos. Uh, I have Visual Studio Code 125 with the VS Code plugin. So if you want to replicate it, that's all you need on your machine. So let me just finish up here with you know, that picture again. You know, this is a general purpose language, but we see the sweet spot as being the glue between different endpoints, being the, the, the language you can use to build logic that pulls together your Twilio, your existing internal APIs, your apps, Salesforce, all of these things can be really easily orchestrated. So this is why this dancer metaphor is so cool, because it's like a choreogra choreography of different network services. And there's a whole load of ecosystem work that we're doing. Uh, this list is already out of date. Um, we've, we just, if you want to see more, for instance, about the code fresh, there was a really nice webinar that Kasun did jointly with them. You're going to see later on today our integration with Kubeless and OpenWhisk. You're going to see our integration with Honeycomb.io and all sorts of other people. Um, and really, I've demonstrated a few very small parts of the agile and integration simple world. There is a lot more here. You're going to learn a lot today, but there's even more. So I really recommend that you go to Ballerina.io, check out the website, read the release notes, look at this. There's two really good things there. There's core language examples, which we call BBE, Ballerina by example. And there are bigger, more sort of, I want to solve a problem type guides, which we call BBG, Ballerina by guide. And they're really awesome. And as Tyler already mentioned, Slack, Stack Overflow, and Twitter, and we're, you know, we're, we're very responsive. We're very keen to get that, in, in, encourage the ecosystem, build the ecosystem. So please share your experiences, the bugs you find, the problems, the recommendations. Uh, and if you don't want to go beyond that, then submit pull requests. That would be awesome. Thank you very much. I hope that's been a good introduction. Uh, and I've got six minutes left in case we have any questions. There were no questions online. There were no questions. Yeah. I don't know if that good or bad. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm going to step down. Thank you very much, everyone. Cheers. <laughs>